Hello everyone. Uh, in this video, I want to talk about my counselor interview experience for B1, B2 visa. Uh, my counselor interview was in Delhi. Uh, my biometric was in Hyderabad. So I booked my biometric in Hyderabad and counselor in Delhi. You can book different cities. That's not an issue, right? Now I'm going to talk two things. Uh, which are generally true for everybody and then I'm going to talk about my experience specifically for the Delhi center so it's more relevant for the folks who are visiting Delhi center right now first we'll cover the general stuff which is relevant for everybody the documents that you need to carry the documents you should not the things you should not carry or not do uh, the questions the kind of questions they can ask the kind of answers I had you can prepare or I had prepared the questions I was asked um, and all those things right the first the documents that you need to carry so three things are mandatory one is your application confirmation the DS 160 application confirmation printout which you carry to the biometric center because it will have a stamp on it so you need to carry that second thing you need to carry is your appointment confirmation printout Make sure it's the same printout which you were carrying for the biometric. The third thing that you need to carry is your passport, old or new passport. Your passport should have a sticker from the biometric center. So please make sure you have not lost it. These are the three things. You don't need to carry passport size photos for the counselor interview. Other than that, if you read, they mention that you should carry some kind of uh, documents to help uh, you in uh, your visa interview or supporting documents they write in the supporting documents now there is no set list for the supporting documents uh, they have never uh, checked like in all my research I have never found any guy where they have asked for any documents or even even when I was at the center they did not ask anybody for to give them the supporting document still everybody carries a supporting document I also carry the supporting documents, but I will suggest you don't need to bother so much about it. If you really want to carry it, you can carry it, but it, the, the people carry it because it gives them the confidence while answering it. They can say, Ki, hey, uh, this is my answer and I have something to prove it as well. Although the person who is interviewing you is never going to ask you because it is not mentioned explicitly on any of the portal or in their official website that what documents. So you don't really need to carry it. You can carry it for your own things the documents uh, there are two or three type of documents i will suggest so one is your personal identification for example um, your uh, your mark sheets your aadhaar card uh, your address proof your employment proof just ki, hey i am this person and the second can be your financial condition proof and this is critical in general not in terms of document in general uh, so the document that because a person should be financially independent for uh, for them to go in US travel on their own and come back they should be able to support themselves right so the documents that uh, you can carry is your bank statement for last three months or six months it's better if it is a stamp if it's even if it's not stamped it's okay your salary slip your ITR proof uh, your investment proof these are the four type of documents you can use this document to prove that you're financially capable enough to sponsor your own trip to the US. You can go there, spend your uh, time in US and can come back. Now, the other type of documents are probably work related, your ID proof, your employment letter, um, uh, uh, your salary slip again, just related to your employment. Hey, I am employed in India. Or if you have a business, your business documents, ki, hey, I have a business running in India. This is my GST number. This is the business return file. This is my business location. Uh, this is the business I do. Uh, proof for that, if there's a website, probably you should tell them the uh, link of the website because they check the website. That's what they do. Um, they have a laptop. So if you mention them something, they can actually go and visit those things uh, on their laptop. Uh, the other documents you can carry is to just show your ties to the India. For example, if you're married, it's better if you carry that I'm married. So I have my wife here. Um, if you have a property in India, that carrying property document will show that you have a 
very strong tie to India because you, you own a property in India. If you have uh, uh, like a big family or let's say um, anything which proves that you like you, your parents are there, both of them probably age, they need you. So you can all these documents, some kind of proof will help you establish the case ki, hey, I have very strong ties to India and I'll come back to the India. Because what they want to be assured of is that you're not immigrating to the US on a non-immigrant visa. And uh, that's what uh, they want to be sure of. And these documents helps them make the decision, right? The next thing that comes is that, uh, what happens at the council interview? So, in each of the counselor embassy, uh, US embassy where the consular interview happens, there is a process after which you reach the consular interview. I'm going to talk about consular interview first and then I'm going to talk about my daily experience. In the interview, generally they ask you a lot of questions and it's a one to two to three minute process at each of the counselor uh, window. And there are counselor windows in parallel. So uh, in Delhi, I had 20. 23 to 25 windows and everybody every window is next to each other and you can actually hear when anybody is giving the interview that what they're asking and what they're answering and um, uh, but you cannot uh, be sure that of the questions because they might ask you a different question or different questions to them because every person is different somebody is married somebody is not married somebody is uh, uh, oh, as an employee, somebody has his or her own business, somebody is very young, somebody is very, somebody has kids also in India, somebody doesn't have, somebody has a property. So the questions may vary. What, what do they want to do is that first, the very first thing they want to make sure that whatever answers you are giving are matching your answers with the DS-160 form. So you need to make sure that you answer whatever you've written in DS-160 form. If you answer anything which is different what is mentioned in the ds 164 form then you need to make make sure that you give them the reason as well otherwise they are most likely going to reject your visa now the one question i'm going to talk about the questions that you are going to the people generally get the one question which is common there is only one question which they ask everybody and that answer should be flawless that is what is the purpose of your visit now um General practice, don't just say one word or one line answer. Ki, hey, I'm on holiday or I'm meeting my family or I'm going for a vacation. Try to be elaborating with a bit of details. For example, hey, I am going for a holiday uh, for 10 days and I'll be visiting Las Vegas and uh, Miami Beach. Or you can just say, ki, hey, I'm going to be meeting my friend and we'll be going on a road trip for six days to uh, to Yellowstone Park and then I'll come back. So you need to be a bit detail oriented. Don't give one word of one line answer and don't give a long answer as well. Try to be try to keep your answer short, but more than one line. That's the general key. Uh, uh, the very first thing when you go to the window, they will say, hey, hi, how are you? You should also greet them nicely. Hey, yeah, I'm fine. How are you? Uh, uh, if you are not OK with English, you can you can request for a translator as well and they will provide you a translator. The translator will be from embassy office itself and that person will be most likely an Indian. The embassy, the person who is going to interview is most likely going to be a US citizen. Sometimes uh, it's Indians also, but I'm not sure if those guys are Indian citizens or the, the Indians who have migrated to the US, but they're employed in uh, US embassy in India. Uh, but the translator you can request if you're not comfortable with English, you can ask for uh, the tra in language translator in which you are comfortable with and they will ask the question to the translator and translator will brief it to you. You can answer it and the translator will give the answer to the person. However, it's better if you make sure you have the eye contact with the, uh, with the interviewer itself. Now, uh, they will greet you. You should greet them. The first question will always, always going to be what is your purpose of your visit and you answer it. And then there are going to be many questions depending on your DS-160 form. You need to make sure that you don't vary your, uh, uh, your answers from DS-160. So some of the very generic questions, which most likely they are going to ask is that, where are you going to in, stay in the US? Uh, if you have a plan where you are going to stay, at least for the first, if you're meeting a friend, you should tell them, okay, I'm for first few days, I'm going to stay with my friend and he or she stays in whichever state and, uh, I'll be staying with them and then I'll be traveling and I'll be booking hotels. 
two or three star hotels there. Uh, the other question they might ask you, uh, how long your friend has been in US? So let me just talk about the questions that I got. And then after that, I'll probably talk about a few more questions which they can ask. First question that they asked me was, what is the purpose of your visit? And I told them, Ki, hey, I'm going for a holiday. I'll be meeting few of my friends and we'll be traveling to Las Vegas and uh, Yellowstone uh, Park. And uh, uh, the second question that they asked me is that, where will you be staying in USA? So I said, Ki, for first three days, I'll be staying with my friends in California. And uh, after that, we'll be doing a road trip to this and we'll be booking hotels. And the last thing, uh, my exit port is again California. Uh, then again, I'll be staying for one or two days with my friend. What does your friend do in the USA? You may, you need to make sure that if you have given any reference of a friend or family, you need to know their details. What do they do? On which visa they are? For how long they've been there? In which company they work for? What is their address? What is their mobile number? All these details should be by heart. They can ask you. Do you know their phone number? Do you know their address? What do they do? Which company they work for? And they can check those information. So please make sure you also remember it. Uh, then they asked me, what do you do? I explained them uh, because I had selected other in my DS-160 form since I'm a product manager and product manager was not an option. So they asked me, what do you do? I said, I'm a product manager. I work for a company and I provided the details. What do I do? Which market I handle? Uh, after that, they asked me, are you married? I said, yes, I am married. And the very, uh, since I did not, I had not applied for the visa for my wife with me. So the, the next question was, why is your wife not traveling? And I had a very genuine reason that my wife ha has a business in India. So she'll not be able to travel because it will be the season time when I'm planning. And this is a undergrad trip, which me and my friends are planning. Uh, and we are meeting for after probably 10 years. Uh, then they asked me, does your wife has a visa? I said, no, my wife does not have a visa. In future, she might apply, but as of now, she does not hold any visa. Uh, then they asked, what does she do? I said, she runs a business and then she has a website. So I gave them the website name and I think they checked it as well. Uh, then they asked me, do you have kids? I said, I don't have kids. Then they, uh, then after that, uh, they just, uh, up, they said, your visa is approved. And they said, congratulations, your visa is approved. If your visa is approved, they will not return your passport. They will return the old passport, but the new passport, they will keep it. Let's say if you have two passports, so the latest passport, they will keep it. They will return the other passports and you will receive your passport probably after three, four days. If you have selected the pickup option, you have to go and pick up. If you have selected the delivery option, it will be delivered by the blue dart in India to your house and it, you have to pay 850 rupees to them. Now, there were a lot of people uh, who requested translator. There were a lot of people uh, where the visa was not approved. So don't, when you are in the queue, don't get uh, bothered if somebody's visa is not approved or somebody is fumbling or if it's taking time, be comfortable. If you answer, if you answer all the questions with confidence and with a smile, most likely your visa is going to be approved. They are there to give you a visa. You just need to make sure that you are honest and uh, you are not uh, giving them a reason to doubt your intention of uh, visiting to the US. Now I'm going to talk about my experience on the Delhi center. So uh, my my appointment was morning at 9.20 a.m. I reached uh, the US Embassy in Delhi at around 9 and there was a long queue outside and I asked, is it a 9.20 a.m. queue? Then they said, yes. Again, if it's, if it's any other queue, let's say 9 a.m. queue or 9.40 a.m. queue, you, they will not allow you to be in that queue. They will ask you to stand on the other side of the road. So the queue starts on the main road itself. It's not even inside the center. You are in the main road. Once you once you enter, then again, at the any of the council entry center, again, you cannot carry any of the electronic devices with you, which is your watch, laptop, mobile, uh, any of the electronic devices, camera, you cannot carry, it's not allowed inside. So they'll frisk you. They will again check the documents guards will check the appointment confirmation and they will make sure that you have an appointment at the set time in the queue that you are in. So once you have crossed the guard, then again, you're still outside. They have a, they have a structure created out of bamboo. There will be two administrative guys who will again 
check your application confirmation appointment confirmation and doc, uh, passport they will match the details of the application confirmation with the appointment and they will match your passport details with the application form so they will ma match all these details and they will make sure that you have the right passport you have a sticker you have a stamp all those details and they will, they will allow you to go inside the embassy now once you go inside the embassy you are still not inside the building before the embassy they again have a two or three rooms kind of area where they have a lot of benches there again you will be in a queue and again you will go and your all your stuff will be scanned under a luggage scanner and you, they will be frisked again so you have already gone through two checks one is frisking and one is document verification the third time is again frisking your documents will again be scanned and then they will once it is done you have to pick all your documents and you can go and sit on benches where everybody is sitting now there is no queue inside everybody probably people from the previous queue there will be somebody who will be coming in the another time slot all of them are sitting and from there they will allow a batch of 20 to 40 people to go in the embassy now they will ask this there are four rows of benches they will say hey first row can get up and leave second row can get up and leave so let's say second row third row you get up and leave and you reach inside the embassy now once you start inside the embassy now inside the embassy where all these windows consular windows are there you will see a huge crowd probably 200 300 folks probably from the slot let's see here in 9 aim slot people from the 820 slot 840 slot 929 aim slot and then some folks will be coming from 920 slot so all of them are inside right what happens you get in a queue first the very first thing happens is that in a you get in a queue and you get in so inside there are three queues going on you get in the first queue which is to verify your biometric now make sure now remember they took your biometric at the biometric center so the first queue that you will go on you will give your documents ki, hey i am this person this is my appointment the person who is sitting at the window and they will there's a device where you put your fingers and your thumb and you verify that you are the same person who went for the biometric that is one step now you come to the second queue in the same area of embassy the second queue one person will collect come and collect all your document um one person no i think uh, even in the first in the first queue itself one person will collect all your passport and when you go to the bio, uh, biometric verification they will call out your name and they will give you a passport after you verify your uh, name and then you will go in the second queue in the second queue what happens uh, uh you the second queue is only one queue all the person and they there's a the, the, there is one long queue and there are three four guards who at the at the initiate of at the end of that queue they're telling you you have to go to which window so let's say you reach this you reach uh you reach at the start of the queue and then they will tell you here you go to the window number five window number six wherever there is nobody waiting right now each of the window also has a queue of two to three people let's say there are 25 windows so each of these windows also have a queue so from the queue two you come to the window queue so from the queue two they just tell you hey you go stand in the window five window six and you go and stand in your window five or window six now in your window queue all these queues are parallel and you can you can look at other windows you can hear their questions and answers uh, and you can observe the entire process while in the queue as well but now you're much closer to the window in the embassy now what happens is that in my case i was very unfortunate i reached a window where the person before me had a very complicated case uh, probably he had one or two previous rejections and some kind of objection so in general this and if you go in a queue it takes at least five to six minutes uh, for you to uh, leave the embassy with the decision whether you are getting once you are in the queue to leave the embassy the window with the decision whether you're getting the visa or no not visa let's say there are three people the first person will take two minutes second person two minutes and you will also take two minutes so within six to eight minutes you know whether you are getting the visa or not unfortunately the person who was ahead of me took 25 minutes the person who was interviewing uh, him uh, went inside spent 20 minutes uh, 10 minutes consulting others she came back then she asked few more questions to the person then she went inside again she came back after minutes she asked more questions then she went back she came back again asked him more questions and after 25 minutes 
she said no to him the visa is not approved we cannot approve it and that person was really really sad uh and unfortunately by now by this time i was also getting very anxious because it has already passed 25 minutes and everybody like uh, i i know some of the folks who were in the uh, like i did the 10 am there were some of the folks who were 9:40 am slot and they had left because uh, uh i met some of the youtubers who were planning the us traveling and they were way behind me because i said hi to them when they were in the queue they were in 9:40 slot and they had left and their visa got approved and i was in 9 am so i was still waiting in my queue and after that uh, 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 we also met one one of my uh, family's friend outside uh, they had come there with their daughter for the visa approval and she also got so uh, yeah so for her uh, also it was a problem i don't know if she got the visa or not a uh, few general things that you should take care of while you are at the center don't get nervous if you have applied for a b1 b2 visa the success rates are very high uh because you are going there for tourism purpose not going to stay there so and unless they find a reason not to approve the visa it's assume assume you are going to get the visa if you are actually going to going for tourism and if you have in in a financial uh, credibility in a ties to india if you are able to convince them right a uh, few more things that you should take care of is that uh, again in delhi you do not have uh, you have to keep everything outside so if you are coming from outside of delhi please make sure you book hotels nearby uh, near to the us embassy there is no locker facility so you need to carry uh, you need either you should be going there with somebody so that you can give your electronic devices watches laptop mobiles all everything to them or you leave everything to the hotel and then you go by cab and carry cash with you cash is allowed inside in us embassy there's a shop also so you can buy tea you can buy refreshment snacks inside and you can have it you don't need to worry about it uh in general uh, there will be lot of crowd and you will see lot of emotions happening around lot of people will be getting immediately sad and some of them will go on the back side and sit down and they will request for one other interview which is not allowed don't get bogged down by it by it don't focus on it just focus on on your own interview and uh, yeah if you liked uh, this video please share and subscribe i'm going to post uh, one more video around how to get slots quickly so do make sure you check that out and uh, i will be posting i'll be talking about an app and website where you can check the slots regularly rather than logging into the uh us scheduling.com again and again because they it can lock you out so please follow and share and subscribe and uh, if you want if you have any uh, query questions you can put down it in the comments and i'll answer them or you can reach out to my email id as i'm going to mention it in the caption i'm going to mention all the uh, links uh, uh, of the slot website from where you should pay the fee uh, in the in the caption and also my email id if you want to reach out to Have a good day. Uh thank you.